it's totally okay that this is a clusterfuck because this is what our show is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a clusterfuck. Dude, dude listen, listen, I was expecting a lot more people too. Oh, so no way. Uh, we, we, we had three guests scheduled each episode, and the first episode, one of the guests completely flaked. And oh, it was a God. blessing because I was pissed at him, but it was a blessing because we should not have more than me and two people. Okay. All right, that's cool. Because Zoom also cuts us off after a period of time. So, so it's, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, because if you have too many people in it, anyway, I don't want to get into all that. But all right. it's basically a great thing that our show's a clusterfuck, that there's technology people can't work. There's fucking, you know, all kinds of barriers. There's, there's people waking up, rolling out of bed, uh, people with no pants, and that's what our show's supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be a total clusterfuck. You've got a host. You've got a host who shouldn't ever be hosting anything. I I hate hosting. I I hate hosting the way you ho hate being sober. Okay. I fucking hate it. Have you ever seen me host a show? No, I haven't. And I'll tell and I'll tell you right now. Listen, I don't hate being sober. Okay. I like being sober, but. I like being fucked up better. You should just go. You should have just, you know what? You should have just gone with what I said. Uh, look, basically, that was like a Bukowski answer. <laughs> we have a guest who didn't show up, so I'm just going to introduce Brandon. This is what it is. Brandon's a perfect guest for the show. He's a, <laughs> a perfect train wreck, uh, an agent of chaos, <laughs> and our Nebuchadnezzar Jewish friend will be joining us soon. Um, yeah, he's actually coming. This guy, look, he gave me an intro, but let's be honest. I'm gonna, I'll tell you the way I, I see it. Yes, he's a very multi-talented guy and a very ambitious guy for a guy who drinks and is stoned a lot. Uh, <laughs> he's in, one of the most talented up-and-coming uh, comedians. He's a new, he's new to stand-up comedy, but he's kind of like. You wouldn't know it. He's a guy who seems like he's been in comedy for 15 or 20 years. A I've been really a brilliant dude and a, a guy that I, that I really hope we get, America gets to see more of. Uh, screenwriter, actor, multi-talented dude, my friend Brandon Bricado. Thank you for joining us on the, the fucking clusterfuck no idea zone. Lolly, I love it, man. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your show, dude. Fucking, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm happy to be here. Good morning. Great. Thank you, brother. Uh, we have a very, uh, we have a guest who's tuning in, who's, who's here, but he's not here. And we'll be introducing him as soon as I see his face. But, uh, I want to just get on with this, um, this sort of, I love that you're here because I need like 20 of you. That's what I need for my show. I need we had Mike Bataya on the first episode who was walking around smoking a cigarette in his house, just like you're doing. This is, say, this is like Johnny Carson. I can smoke on your show. It's fucking great. It is. It, you know what it is? It's the underbelly of Johnny Carson. That's what this, there, this there fucking go. experience is. I am an unwilling, a, a basically a half-willing participant in this whole thing. <laughs> Um, the, the I'm pork belly chef. Yeah, I'm stressed out. I I'm I'm burned out already. We've I, I, I taped like I'm taping a sh uh, episode every day and sometimes twice a day, and nice. you know I'm just ready. I I'm just ready. This is what I want, Brandon. Let me tell you what my dream is. I want all of the the fame and credit that Michael Jordan had in his prime as an athlete without it having to show up. I just, I want to have like, I want to be like regarded the way Stanley Kubrick is regarded. Yeah, without doing the work. And just be at home and, and be a mystery to people because I don't really like putting out the effort. I, I don't really enjoy. No. I'm not going to lie. Howard, you're here, but you're, we can't see you. But it's better. We, we're seeing like a sort of like, what Han Solo saw as he was being taken to his death on Tatooine, like a like a light blur. You know what? You should. Uh, oh, sorry. That's okay. You're figuring it out. Yeah. I'm trying so, to figure it out. Yeah. Is that you, Howard? Is that me? Yeah. Oh, I can hear you. 
This is so perfect for our show. Howard, you don't know yeah. how perfect this is. Not only do, am I in a fog, but I look like a fog. Howard, this is what our show is. It's a fucking disaster. <laughs> and we want it to be a disaster. Is there like tape over his camera or something? Like, why is it opaque? Like, why can I see shapes and light? Well, but, like, it's better, literally. It's that's, better that's than the, the blind people see. Like, they, they just see light and that's it. Yeah, how did they have like did they have like an emergency Zoom guy you could call up and he comes to your house, you know, like you know, no, like man. AAA or something. <laughs> I mean, you could call the Direct TV guy, and get him over, and see <laughs> <you> guys, but <laughs> initially, it's still gonna take a week. You know, initially when I was pitched this show, I said if I can have comics just scream at each other for twenty minutes and then push a button and end it and call it the No Idea Zone, that was how the show was conceived. So. <laughs> The, the technology uh, breaking down, it's perfect. It's no, perfect. I love it. I love it. So, Brandon, tell us about your, tell us about your, uh, your quarantine experience so far. Uh, as you can see, rocking my mutton chops here. Fucking, uh, you know, I've, got, I've felt pretty liberal with, uh, with, my, with my facial hair. Actually, I, I, did, I hadn't shaved since maybe a month before the quarantine. So, and I've been doing a pretty good job of quarantining myself. So it's, it, it just, it was just like, brah, like it just looks so dirty. And I was like, you know, I kept like kind of tilting back the hair and being like, I think I could rock this shit and fucking shaved it off the other day. And I, dude, I'm absolutely in love with it. I look like the biggest scumbag ever. And it'll help me in the long run because when the stores start running out of meats and shit like that, I can go around and fucking just rob people in my neighborhood. And when you've got like a fucking Lemmy beard, when you're robbing him, it's just that much scarier, you know? You, you look like a guy who cuts meat. Like just <laughs> not, not professionally, just like, you know, just so like, like yeah, you, you don't cut meat, bro. Fucking, of course I cut meat, dude. I mean, it, you have the like the deli slicer at home, you know? Well, no, you see, okay. So this is the thing about, about the end of the world. Okay. Is that like, it's only a matter of time for you're going to have to kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's good fucking meat right there, okay? So I'm looking forward to, you know, killing my first home invader. That way I can butcher him up and fucking eat him. You know, like, I, I'm, I, I believe what the Native Americans did it right. You know, they used every bone in the body. So, you know, I'll probably, you know, do something with this femur and, you know, like maybe his little finger bones. I'll make a little necklace or something like that. But, you know. Yeah, you, you, you're you going to have to do something to also to keep other people away who might demean you harm, who might have better weapons than you. Well, that's true, but I have quite a bit of ammo and some decent weapons, so I think I'll be fucking fine, tell you the truth, in the end of the world. Well, you certainly won't have any invasion from Howard Berger because he <laughs> he can't invade our Zoom call. You know, so you won't have to worry about you won't have to worry about the hour burning the Rona, bro. Don't make me laugh. Uh, I was trying to break into a Zoom call. All right, I, I'm, doing, know, I'm doing the song. <coughs> you got a cough in your elbow. That's good. That's a huge compliment, by the way, people out there. When a, when a, when somebody can't laugh because they're they've been smoking so much. That uh, I I I see Howard. I see him trying to patch in, man. Right. I mean, it's just like so it's like hard. a twelve-year-old trying to lose his virginity, watching <laughs> Howard trying to get into this call. You know, it's unbelievable. It's like watching Howard try to break into show business for thirty years. Uh, oh man! So he's got a face for TV. Shit. You know, not you know a, not a face for radio. You know, this is. This is also why it's good to not just have one guest, because if it yeah. was just me and Howard, I wouldn't have you to laugh about this with. I, absolutely. Literally, I think there's a piece of tape over his fucking camera on his phone. Like, Poor I mean, guy. as he tried switching to the other camera. There like, it is again. There's the, there's the light blur. Do you see it? Yeah, it's like an iPhone 4 he's working off of. And it, we're like, they got like you know, iPhone 11s and shit. They have cameras, though, the iPhone. They have people use... Yeah. I think I think iPhone four only had one camera on the back. It didn't have the front camera, or no, it did. But I don't know. I don't but still, remember. even if that's the back camera, th Dude, we should be seeing something. We're talking like 2011 here. Okay, it was 10 years ago. It's fucking insane, know. dude. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I'm not keeping up with the phones. But you, but, you. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of when I had my four, and it had. It, I dude, I was, I was like still working at like this one bar, like. 
That that's it was like ten. Oh, years Brandon's ago. also a bartender. Uh, not anymore. I'm no, reti- I'm retired as a bartender. No, where yeah. was your last? Where was your last bartending gig? Uh, it was in. Uh, it was uh, at Cabo Cantina in Venice. That's a great place. I, I fucking I literally just one day got drunk on the job and like just poured 151 all over that bridge and just lit a match and was like fuck this place you didn't like, do that I just got come drunk on to come on i no, swear to god got drunk to a point that my fucking manager was just like are you okay and i just grabbed a bottle of jameson and just started pouring it into my mouth and he was like he was like okay get out from behind the bar and i just got out from behind the bar and i was like can i go home now and he was like yes and i was like see you later i'm out peace and then he tried to talk to me, and I was like, nah, bro, I'm over this place. I'm fucking done. I can't do this anymore. I'm out. And I had another See, job lined up. Like, I, I, I was starting to do carpentry and shit like that. So I, I, I've been working production and doing carpentry jobs and shit like that. Yesterday, I fucking uh, pulled a water heater out of a dude's house. We're installing it later, t- the new one today. Oh, so you're working? Uh, here and there, you know, here and there. Not on the record. Don't tell. Don't tell the unemployment office. Well, this is the record, brother. I'm sorry to break it to you. It's this all right. Is, don't worry about this it. This is I, a published, I, produced. You know, yeah, unfortunately, I don't, think, I don't think they're gonna fucking harp down on me for a fucking for pulling a water heater. Out I think me. they've got too many uh, claims to be dealing with to be worried I, about I, you I, I totally right agree. now. Um, so. Man, you, you gave me a lot there. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to say this to you because I do I do like to point out when productive information is passed along in the yeah. conversation. And what Brandon just illustrated is something that everybody could learn from: how to quit a job. There are good ways to quit a job. There are ways to quit a job. You shouldn't quit a job quietly. You should quit a job in a way where you have a story to tell about listen, how you quit listen, that job. Listen, listen. I, I guarantee anybody who's listening right now, this is what happened. When they say they're like a good person, and I, I used to quit jobs like this too. You put in your two weeks notice, and three days later, you're no longer on the schedule, and they fucking replace you already. They don't even give you that two week buffer to save up cash to like do whatever, which means that they don't give a flying fuck about you. And if you pay attention to the current political climate, obviously, fucking your employer does not give a flying fuck about you. So if you want to make sure that you never go back to that job, burn the fucking bridge. There's nothing wrong with burning bridges. Sometimes you, times Brandon burn- literally burned the literally burned. No, I didn't literally light the place on fire. <laughs> okay, I just wanted that was to... metaphorically. That was metaphorically. Um, but I never quit. I never, not never. I don't know if I ever quit a job like that. Oh, bro. Uh, I I have quit jobs. Every, well, first of all, any job that ends is going to end badly. You're not. It's, it's just not crazy. ending because things were great. You know. Yeah. Um, no, it's because you put up with the shit to a point where you just fucking crack. I mean, the Scarface scene in Half Baked, where he's like, "Fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out, dude." I've, I, I quit. I worked at Johnny Rockets when I was like twenty, like one, and that's exactly how I quit Johnny Rockets. I just was like, "Fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out." I was like, "Do my checkout, I'm out of here, fuck this place." And listen, man, there's nothing more empowering than that feeling of walking out of a fucking job that you fucking hated. And you're just like, I'm never going to have to come back here again. And then, you know, it feels good for like three days. And then the panic sets in. You're like, what the fuck am I going to do now? But all of it, but they all feel that way. Whether you quit well or not quit well, you, whether you, so you might as well go out in a blaze. Who taught you, who told you or taught you, who was your mentor in all this? Cause I, am a Jew and we don't quit jobs like that. We quit no, jobs yeah, quietly yeah. and with we, we, we have way yeah, too you, much you fear of authority. To go back if you don't like the new thing. Um, it's, it's, it's a reckless part of me and fucking, and really, like I said, the reason why I don't work at the bar anymore is because I'm personally, dude, I, I'll, I'll, I, the first step, I got that shit down, dude. There's a problem for sure. You know, like, you know, sometimes I have the most incredible nights ever drinking and some nights are fucking horrible. Some are magic, some are tragic. That's just the way it is, you know? But like, well, the, the, you did get your, your, uh, you got job your, rushing. 
jaw broken. Yeah, right? yeah I did so. get my jaw broken. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, that's that's when I learned. That's when I. That's how funny I am. Is that I? I clowned a guy so hard he broke my fucking jaw. I was blacked out. I didn't remember any of it. Like it was over sports shit and fucking. Either way, fucking the dude sucker punched me from behind. And what I should have done is just gone down, but I don't go down very easily so i turned around Well, also like, you weren't feeling anything at that point yeah yeah well yeah physically bro, no. you were so yeah. fucking drunk yeah oh yeah oh yeah and uh and fucking literally the dude hit me in the back of the head and then i turned around and just the cleanest left i've ever caught my entire life just pop it was over in the matter of two seconds and then fucking all that all of a sudden all i really remember was kind of like facing down and spitting the most amount of blood I've ever spit out of my mouth. Like it was just like, poof. it collected real fast. And I just fucking like shot it down on the ground. And I looked up and the dude was gone. His friends were gone. I saw them just going down the stairs as security came up the stairs. And then they were like, those were the motherfuckers go get them. And the motherfuckers just dipped out. It was Venice, dude. Never saw Apparently, the guy again. Don't know what the guy looked like because you were blacked out. You don't even dude, remember anything. All I know is all I know is a black guy with tattoos, dude. And fucking and to, and, to, and tell you the truth, fucking the person he was hanging out with was fucking. I it, let's just put it this way, okay? Fucking, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, dude. And saying the wrong things. Yeah, no, it was fucking hilarious though. I was clowning his football team so bad, dude. Fucking. Who was his kept, team? Uh, his quarterback's name is Dakota. And I kept calling his quarterback Dakota. Wait, I what's told this? Him, I Wait. told him he was going to be garbage. It was like the first year that Dak Prescott came out. Oh, okay. And I was like, I was like, whatever, bro. They're going to get tape on him, and he's going to fucking suck. And look, look who was right. Yeah, you were right to a fault. Uh, dude, so, dude, so I, 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 kept, I, <laughs> I kept asking him because he's a Cowboys fan, and they're about them boys, you know. So I was like, I literally was like challenging his mascot. Oh, Cowboys Raiders is not a pretty. That's no, not no, a pretty. no, 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 no. Yeah, usually it's Mexican on Mexican, but this time it was white on black. You know, the nation doesn't see any fucking color but black and silver. Well, you weren't seeing anything blacked out. I, yeah, I was black. Anyway, and so. <laughs> Uh, you so I do want to. I do want to say silver in my fucking teeth when they wired my jaw shut for six weeks. But I'm not gonna lie. Hey, that was the best diet I ever went you got, on. You got on. silver in your teeth? Yeah. Oh yeah. What's more my, raiders than that? I got my jaw wired shut, bro. I remember. <laughs> I remember seeing yeah. you. I remember you sucking on yogurt <laughs> through a straw. <laughs> now lots of milkshakes and fucking insurers, bro. But fucking. Uh, <laughs> I fucking like dude, that's what you live on, bro. That's all you get. You yeah, get I know. I remember seeing you, and I remember you, seeing you, you lose a like tremendous a amount of weight it. and have regret. You had yeah. regret. Oh uh, uh, yeah, bro. I, I learned. I learned a valuable lesson. I learned that I w I was too funny for my own good that night. <laughs> okay, and like yeah. really, you know, if I would have if I would have handled it differently, and I wouldn't have gone off on the fucking guy. But you know, it is what it is, dude. Fucking, they got the best of me that night. So, so I, I, the only comparable story I have to your, your burning the bridge at your job story is that I can remember. I may recall something, but if, if there was anything good, it would stand out in my mind. Uh, I had moved to LA and I was getting spots and I got a spot, like a legitimate spot at the Laugh Factory. I was getting spots at the Laugh Factory on like Chocolate Sunday. Okay. And like Latino nights, but I wasn't getting the regular night spot. And I got a, a, a regular night spot and I fucking destroyed at the Laugh Factory. Uh, and I was up all night. And the people from my work, because I had a job at the time, uh, I was a telemarketer in Glendale. Yeah. And all the people from work, a bunch of the people like management and everybody came. And so I had this great show. And I wonder if. There was something in my mind where I thought, okay, well, now all the people from work know this should be my real work. Yeah. Right? So there, yeah. so there was some sense of a delusion that yeah. I was experiencing, and I was up all night. I wasn't partying, but I was up late. I was out late. Yeah. And, and I definitely – and then I think I, I think the next morning, okay, the next morning, the guy who came to the show – 
Mm -hmm. with me, the manager or whatever. He goes, hey, man, you want to get high before work? And I go, sure, why not? Let's get high. He thought, I, now I'm the cool guy who wants to get high. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he gets, we get high. I don't remember what the fuck I said on those phones that day in that telemarketing job. But at the end of that day, they were like, you can't come back here. Wow. Yeah. And that wow. ended. That was that was 2002? 2002, wow. dude. So uh, that's I, my – and I didn't quit that job, but I went out in spectacular fashion because yeah, I may I, have been I – mean, I was on the phones doing my – like riffing. I was like – Yeah. Yeah. Got and to, they were got listening to, in. Too comfort. Yeah, a little too comfortable. And, and, you're like, and you're like, hey, this is my tool humor, so why don't I incorporate this into the gig? You know, like, as a bartender, you do that. So, like, I mean, it's funny, uh, uh, you know, when Shannon, when Shannon uh, McClendon kicked me off of a bar stool and was like, dude, you need to do comedy. Like, you know, he, he said something cheesy like, fucking, don't deprive the world of your voice. And I was just like, all right. So then like, I started doing it. And I remember like when I started doing standup, it was so easy because it was like bartending, but like you didn't have to bartend. And like you literally, all you had to do was talk into the microphone and relate with people. Like I, d I did that shit for fucking 15 years as a bartender. You, you know, had make sort of a, you had sort of a dream come true. One in a million introduction to stand up comedy. Most people don't have that by the way. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I do. You had a blessing, a, a, a smooth. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very uh, lucky with that. Like it was the same thing with acting. Um, I was an actor. Uh, Two thousand. I was, I was just graduated from high school. I was nineteen. I was working at said Johnny Rockets, and I had a buddy who was just like, he was like, yeah, I came here from San Diego to be an actor. And I was like, you can't just be an actor, bro. Like, you have to be in, like, drama and shit like that. And he was like, no, nah, man, you can totally just be an actor. And I was like, huh. And I was taking prerequisites at SMC. And he was like, you should get in my class. There's room. And I was like, all right. So I joined his class. I needed, a, a you know, a, an elective. So I was like, okay, I joined the class. And fucking, you know, like, it was pretty apparent early that, like, I took very easily to it. Like, it was – it it – by the end of that class, everyone was like, you're going to be a star. And I'm like, dude, this is our first acting class. Like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I randomly, the way I got into acting was I was working at Johnny Rocket. 